So the next news is that the Air Force, the United States Air Force, has updated its dress code policy to include turbans, beards, and hijab. Uh, the U.S. Air Force has updated its dress code policy to outline a clear approval process for Sikhs and Muslims who want to serve while wearing their articles of faith. Under the new guidelines, Sikhs and Muslims can seek a religious accommodation to wear turbans, beards, unshorn hair, and hijabs, and expect to be approved as long as their appearance is, quote, neat and conservative, except under extremely limited circumstances. The final review for the accommodation must take place within 30 days for cases in the United States and 60 days for all other cases according to the guidelines. So, what this, I think, the Air Force is trying to do is just streamline the process because they've always been able to ask for religious accommodation. But they were doing it on a case-by-case basis, and there wasn't a clear policy across the entire force. And sometimes it would take an extremely long time from the time that they asked for the accommodation, which, by the way, is from Title Seven, the Civil Rights Act of the... 1964, which I was mentioning in relationship to the student and the professor. Um, uh, but this is just giving an, a clear policy, making it streamlined, making it equal across the board, and making it happen in a faster timeline. Although the Air Force can deny your request um, for um, an accommodation if they find that there is a compelling government interest. So maybe if you're in a war zone and you need to wear a certain type of helmet and your turban prevents that. But en general, they're saying that they've been able to do it. And they had um, a Sikh gentleman was the first to wear a turban. And then in 2018, there was a woman who became the first judge advocate general wearing a hijab. Right. So it's already happened before they streamline this policy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Having religious symbols in government by government employees just feels very uncomfortable. To it just like seems like a, a government um, recognizing the authority and legitimacy of you know some divine source or something like that, right? I mean, I'm all for making uh, life more comfortable for as many people as you possibly can, even if they have extremely ridiculous beliefs. Um, but I mean, it shouldn't well, be based on. It sh hold on, it shouldn't be based on religion. You know, it shouldn't be based on. Oh, because you guys have religion, it should be just like. I mean, why? What? What if I wanted to wear something different? And I didn't have the religion to back it up. So just because now they have a divine thing, uh, giving them the excuse to be different. That this is the, this is a case of religious privilege, uh, and it's being recognized by the goddamn government, right? Basically, this is the government telling you like we have a certain rule for all people, but you people, because you have magic power, you have you have connections to some, you know, high sources of magical spiritual woo woo stuff you guys get different rules and by doing that we are acknowledging the some the government the, the government is acknowledging that these you know divine sources of power or whatever there's something to it so this is the government kind of giving in and accepting you know giving legitimacy to religion i don't know if i like that i don't i don't know what to feel about that by the way, well, Susanna, in the United States, gave us five dollars super chat for yay uh, for for the swear jar for strip home swear. Well, in the United States, people, the government has a constitutional responsibility to not prevent the free exercise of religion, and so that's somewhere where that comes in. That's and in nineteen. In 1964, Civil Rights Act, that's what they define. What does that mean? And then they have this term, reasonable accommodation. No. So oh, okay. reasonable. you are required to give someone a reasonable accommodation to express their religion. So as Why I said. Why religion? Why not opinion in general? Because the Constitution says in the mm. First Amendment, the government shall not um, 
uh, exer- prevent the free exercise. But the of fact religion. that religious opinions get special, you know, constitutional rights over other opinions, this is a case of religious privilege. It is, but if we're talking how we were discussing the professor and his ability to be fired because he didn't meet the standard. That's all this is. There's a standard that the law sets that says you cannot prevent someone from expressing this. Yeah, but you, but can, you can. You can, depending on uh, if the accommodation isn't reasonable. If they say, I have to wear my turban, I'm not wearing the bomb helmet, and if I get a brain injury, the government still has to pay for it, the government will say, no, that's not reasonable. Okay, hold you have on. To take okay. off the turban. G- you already said that. GV is saying they're willing to risk their lives. A turban is fine. Okay, but what about the other people? Okay, so fine. If I was a soldier as well, I'm willing. So then, if I, and I was not religious, like let's say a non-religious soldier, they're willing to risk their life. So they want, like I don't know, if they want to wear like their, you know, a helmet with their. Um, Trump or Bernie thing on it? Are they allowed to do that as well? Because we like, they're like, no, this you're not allowed to do this. Or what if they wanted to wear a, you know, I don't know, KKK thing on their head, right? So you be like, no, they're not, they're not allowed to do that. They're like, well, they're also risking their lives. Why can't they do? Why can't they wear their opinions? Why can't they have something that shows that about their opinions? Um, or somebody wants to be like, oh, I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat, want to wear those stickers or something, uh, or I'm a Satanist or an atheist logo or whatever, right? A Satanist can because they oh. are a recognized religious religion privilege. In the so you States. have to be again. So you see, no, uh, all I'm opinion, not. Don't oh, disagree hold with on, you, Rivka. Let me. So the 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 thing is that you have to be a religion for you to be able to do certain things. That is religious privilege. You could be like, well, these are good people. They're risking their lives or whatever. I don't know what you, those arguments are because I don't care. But it doesn't. All, all anything you say about these religious soldiers applies to the non-religious soldiers as well. Why is religious opinions getting certain privileges that other opinions are not? Because the government is recognizing divine authority, and that is dangerous. That's a violation of church, church and state separation. I don't like this. Well, in the military, because they deal with life and death, they have religious religions that they recognize. They actually recognize more religions than the federal government does Mm. for funerals and things like that, chaplains. So I don't disagree with you about the religious privilege. Mm. I'm just looking at purely from a legal standpoint what the law says and what they are required to do or not do within yeah. the confines of yeah, the law. Yeah, I know that's the law. I'm just saying it's not a good law. It's not the Constitution. I think it should be changed. I think the Constitution is giving too much legitimacy, too much authority to religion, and it shouldn't do that. If you want to make... Yeah, and especially, you know, especially if you're representing the government, putting a symbol that represents your ideology... Uh, to me, it seems like it's, it's almost the same as having a cross in, in City Hall, right? What's the difference between having a cross in City Hall and a cross on a U.S. soldier? Because the government makes an establishment of religion when they put it on their property. When a soldier puts it on, it's so, their free exercise. That's what no, a judge no, it's would not, say, Okay, this is not about the free ex- Okay, so here's the thing. People are like, oh, free exercise of religion. Yeah, n- nobody tells you that you can't exercise your religion, but you can't be like, well, I have to exercise my religion and you have to give me this job while I exercise it while on duty. That's too much to ask for, right? So you could be like, oh, I'm a Christian or a Muslim uh, or a Hindu and I want to practice my religion and nobody should stop me. Fine, do that. But you can be like, well, there are certain things that my religion wants you to, to do and I want to exercise those things while doing this job, even though the rules of this job, you know, is you have to change the rule of this job so I could have this job while exercising those uh, things about my faith. But like, yeah, now you're asking a bit too much, right? Nobody came and stopped you from exercising the things that you want in your religion. But now if you're making demands for certain jobs, government jobs to change so that you could easily, more easily practice your religion, 
that is not about your free exercise of religion. That's about asking for special privileges because of your religion. That's different from, you know, yeah. So I don't think that's the same thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Change my mind. I don't know. I agree with you that it is religious privilege. Yeah. I'm just in in at its base level. Right. Uh, Ian is saying, I mean, more camouflage, the better, right? Yeah, this is... <laughs> Yeah, you guys are missing the point. Like, if it's equal among everybody, I would for all opinions, this would not be religious privilege, right? If other people could put like camouflage Bernie Bernie bro hats, and the government can't stop that, and, and Trump, you know, but you would, you know, do you really want that? Do you want? Okay, so anyway, so if this is the, this is this this is the case of certain rules for people with. Magic sky daddies or magic karma stuff. I don't know, depending on religion. And certain other people that don't have a connection to magic, apparently. And you guys get this rules and you guys get these rules. And the government recognizing that is a violation of church state of separation, I think. News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why, What has? what's holding you back? Okay, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even you know, people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well and share, share our videos because you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that, but we don't care about that anymore, <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritize. What does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately we can't grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. 